Whether you've been in Spain for six months or six years, don't miss Payeth Air and Aredia in conversation with Moody on Bay Radio every other Wednesday at 10 a.m. Payeth Air and Aredia are your international lawyers on the Costa Blanca and have been looking after the expat community for more than a decade. See more at alicantelawyers.es. We are holding uh, and organising a webinar next th- next Wednesday at 5 uh, o'clock. All oh, right, so he's back, yeah. And he's going to be about updates on Golden Visa and buying a property in Spain for, for the expat community who's listening from abroad. Mm-hmm. So That's a bit of a teaser. The Golden Visa is still a thing in yeah, Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, scrapped it yet. especially Americans uh, are very interested on that, Yeah, uh, probably because their prices are very high and, and when they sell their property, they've got the funds plus the the money from the property. And they're, they're very, very into it. And then we're going to have the effect that Portugal is reducing all that golden visa effect. So I, I presume, Pedro, that we're going to have probably a benefit a, from that, a benefit from instead, that yeah. so far. Yeah. It's relatively easy for Americans to come come into the, the Schengen area, uh, mm-hmm. to Spain. And mm-hmm. they say, compared to going the other way, uh, yeah, they have it yeah, quite yeah. easy to get in. It's not not that straight, not that uh, difficult, is it? No, I mean actually, they could come uh, as a tourist. They have no issues. Exactly. No, they have no issues. Hmm. And getting a visa, I mean, it says many of them are right now investing to buy properties, but also many of them just come and rent, rent one year, two years, and then buy, <clears throat> which they come with a non-resident. Uh, <clears throat> which are no look at the visa, um, being resident in Spain, taste the country and the atmosphere, the gastronomy, the culture, the cities, and then they buy a property. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but they are coming thousands, I would say, thousands yeah, of Americans. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, we, we, we have a, a lot of clients from, they, uh, they want to go to the east area of uh, Spain, uh, the south, and also to Madrid, also area. Yeah, yeah I did see that uh, a lot of, um, the majority of Americans are going to Madrid. I guess they're used to the, the sort of city well, thing. Well, uh, it's, got, it's got a reason. I mean, Madrid originally had the no wealth tax uh-huh. and no uh, inheritance taxes. So, and, and, and it's a great city and, and for a good investment and for the Golden Visa, <coughs> it's so easy because uh, anything over there is easily in the center more than 500. So, sure. Right. And, so then, that, and then it was approved by Andalusia, the south of Spain, and now it's, been, uh, uh, it's going to be approved. We hope in in Valencia region. Yeah. I mean to eliminate the wealth tax, it's, it's been reduced drastically. Also, the inheritance tax, as it is in right now Andalusia and Madrid. So Valencia region, in some way, is going to be the same area on, on tax benefits. Mm. As, as yeah, Madrid we're down to a, a sort of nominal ninety nine percent reduction. That's right. yes, yes, that's right. correct. Okay. That's correct. So, so I think that was one of the reasons. And Andalusia, uh, actually, mm, they, they still. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to answer. Um, Andalucía or the Comunidad Valenciana, you know, they, they probably according to their likes, their experiences, their sure. their situation when they travel and they fall in love with a, with a city or a village, and they just stay. But uh, they're very similar uh, mm. areas. They probably hear a bit more about the South, I would think, in in the states, in North America, and they hear Puerto Bonus and all of that. So mm, you see, that's see the rich folk down in Marbella. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's <laughs> a different a different clientele, yeah, you yeah. know. Uh, people, what I could tell is that people uh, that decides to come to this area um, are not looking um, so much to to be known. You know, um, in, in Puerto Banús and Mabella, everybody likes to probably just be there show, and, and yeah, show off, you know, yeah, um, fancy. fancy. <laughs> and here, I think people, they just probably <clears throat> retired yeah, and right. they just want to be easy life and nobody known and, and, and probably more relaxed like more, no, probably more that's that our feedback probably yeah I guess it depends what they're doing whether they're coming here to work remotely or retire yeah uh, I suppose yeah. if that, you want to be by the sea yeah um, actually if, if they come here working then they will have to apply for the normal visa yes or uh, and the prices in Andalusia Marbella and if you compare from this area and that area I mean a, a lot cheaper here Mm, property yeah, wise, obviously yeah. as more demand that we are having more increase of the prices are happening <clears throat> but if you compare from Marbella many people is uh, like selling in that area and coming to this area mm. as well as the Marearic Island but it's, it's correct this area is a lot more uh, soft in this case I mean uh, like you know fancy uh, situations um, uh, cars and, and the, the discotheques on this skin yeah it's not quite the same no, no. 
And, but it's easy enough to pop across to uh, Ibiza and... Uh, yeah, that's, and right. yeah that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Formentera. Yeah. Um, what we just, what we're talking about um, residency and the like... Uh, sorry, just let, let Jessica... Go on, you're all right. Yeah. You can go out. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, it's um, in our Spanish news this morning with Cal about the number of uh, Brits that have still just got the old residency document, oh, which yeah. is OK, but there are advantages to switching over, and it's easy to do, but the amount of people, almost half, haven't mm-hmm, done it. Mm-hmm. Well, well, I mean, I, what, what's... What be the, the motivation to get it done well at the end of the day um, I just actually just met somebody yesterday who who had this case uh, they had the A4 form mm. green one probably the problem is that probably the address is not even updated so so you are resident under one um, document under one law which is legal there's, there's nothing wrong with it uh, I, if you're very old and it's difficult to exchange it, probably I understand, you know. But it's easy to have a card, um, and for that, it's much more connected with the administration. Uh, when you go with your passport, I, I mean, and it actually, it's like an ID card. Yes. It's, it's the same like Pedro and myself. You can identify yourself, yeah. If the mm-hmm. police stops you, you don't need to bring your passport if you have a TIE. Yeah. Because that's exactly what you need. Um, otherwise, if you don't have that, then you need to bring your passport with you to identify yourself. That, that's one of Definitely. the reasons. And dealing with the administration, having the TIE is very handy. Um, well, when you travel around, when you go through the airport. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, but, but, but yes, I agree. There is still people not willing to do or and, – and I think you could only lose rights in a way if there, there is anything to lose – because you know how difficult are things, the bureaucracy, how complex it is, and we're going forward the technology. Mm. So one way or the other, if you're going to have the A4 form, you're going to have an issue. I, I, I couldn't to, answer which one. It's going to come to it eventually. They'll yeah. need your biometric uh, fingerprints exactly. and all that. Yeah. Exactly. At the end is your relation with the administration, public administration. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, you update the situation, you update the, mm-hmm. the, the information about address or... And at the end, uh, uh, you show you uh, show up, you prove uh, obviously you are resident. You don't have to do it, but um, obviously something that it, it creates a, a mm. better situation for you in the future. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's just people like me who are going, just haven't got around to it yet, even though they've <laughs> had like three or four years. <laughs> mm-hmm. right. So Ignacio and Pedro in from Payton and Aredia, um, both of them in this week, which we're lucky to have. Lucky to have you, considering how busy you are. But uh, <laughs> I guess uh, you sort of come to this area and then you have appointments within That's right. around. That's right. So we're uh, able to make time for us. We've talked a fair bit around already. Um, generally, a lot, a lot of it does come back to talking about immigration and visas and the like. It's something I, I found. I uh, did a, a bit of prep for this this time, spotted it. And I thought, that's interesting. Interesting. Um, a sort of knock-on effects, really, from the pandemic and lockdown. It was a, someone in Alicante, uh, in the court in Alicante, which cancelled someone his debt. He was, I think, he was a dentist um, mm-hmm. and had some big outstanding loans and mm-hmm. had obviously struggled to pay them back. So it wasn't yeah. like he was irresponsible. But um, it was the law of second... The second opportunity, opportunity. law, yeah. That's and right. you know about this, you know. Well, I mean, it is it is really a bankruptcy proceeding yes. for yeah, individuals, yeah. Yeah, for individuals, not for companies. And uh, uh, what, what it makes really uh, to do it like um, briefly is to reduce um, or eliminate uh, most of the debts or all the debt. But obviously, there is um, I mean, what tries to maintain really is your property, the house that you live, uh, maintain with a plan of payments. Obviously. Um, in order to reduce some debt, um, but also it doesn't mean that you will quit any payment, not at all. I mean, doesn't mean that. No, it means right. that, okay, it's going to stop all the payments. It's going to, in a bankruptcy proceeding, you will stop increasing the interest and it will be reduced drastically any debt and will maintain your property and will quit um, accordingly to any agreement that may take uh, some, some plan of payments from three to five years. So in that case, I haven't read it, but obviously it should be that, that kind of uh, situation where probably it's a self-employment, a dentist, yeah. and uh, not a company. Obviously, any debt that you incur, uh, you have to be like an a, in a entrepreneur or like a good faith. It doesn't have to be like you have it started all this way by negligence or um, no, something that or like bad faith. Like salted the money away in a hidden bank account or something. I'm going yeah. to lie the banks and all these situa- entities hmm. and then I'm going to apply this, this, this law. No. But it goes to a bankruptcy proceeding and it's, it's, it's good, it's okay, yeah. 
Yeah, and I guess that works the same in Spain, does it, as um, we used to in the UK, where if you are self-employed, a sole trader, then mm -hmm. they could go for your house, uh, take your house. But if you, it's a limited liability, an SL, would it be, does it work the same as an SL that... that yeah, no, limited, not, not, obviously not in, a, in a limited a, company. When it's like, a company. Yeah, when it's a company, obviously you go to a bankruptcy proceeding, but in a limited uh, liability. Obviously, this is why we, I mean, all the advisors, the lawyers, obviously we advise, I mean, you, you create a limited company, obviously all the liability goes to that company. Hmm. If it starts in a bankruptcy proceeding, obviously you also have to demonstrate that you did everything mostly in good faith. Because at the end, the administrator, the director of a company could be responsible personally with uh, personal assets. Mm. Uh -huh. Okay, that's important. That is uh, something very um, uh, delicate to, uh, to be a, a director of a company. You uh, should know exactly what liabilities, rights, obligations you have. And but that's right. I mean, obviously, by a limited company, everything goes like all the liabilities, all the rights, obligations, everything goes to a limited company. And your personal life, your personal assets are kept uh, secured. Mm -hmm. that way. Do you deal, deal with this sort of thing very much? Because presumably, if they got no money, then they can't afford to hire you. I don't know. Would you get go for legal aid? Um, does many of these sort of cases come your way? Yeah, I mean, we, we it depends on the case, depends on the situation, depends on the uh, um, um, scenario. Obviously, we we have had clients that we have extended payments or, or, or we have uh, done in a way that uh, facilitate, uh, be flexible on, on, on the client because in the future, obviously, it's going to be the possibility of or for pay, obviously. At the end, mm. we are lawyers, we are barristers, but at the end, this is a business that we need to, to get faith. Obviously, there is a service on legal aid, which I was, I was more than 15 years in the criminal area and the civil area. And um, yeah, that was uh, good. And the court, you apply, if you don't have any resources or any lawyer is admitting you to represent you, obviously, you can go to the court. You don't have uh, income, you don't have... Uh, possibility to in, uh, to instruct a lawyer, obviously there is a, a public service that will help you in order to uh, designate you uh, a lawyer, specialized lawyer, for example, family family situations where in divorce, there is a special area on that, mm. then a criminal, I mean, there are special lawyers, and most of them are, I, mean, I would say, young, which I was in that case when I started, but it's, it doesn't mean that it's bad. It means that well, a lawyer is going to represent you, a qualified lawyer. Yes, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, a lot of them do start out doing those, mm -hmm. don't they? Because it's regular work, but uh, it's not that well paid, I guess. And then you, then you, you, <laughs> that's right. you get that's, more experience right. and you move on. That, and you, that's right. right. Now, sometimes we uh, cover stuff where you kind of overlap with other services, like financial services and like, because the, in the end, it, it needs the legal representative and property as well, of course, mm -hmm. uh, where you come into things. Um, you just said investments there. Where would you mm -hmm. come into that sort of thing? Well, there is a lot of people that uh, are interested as well, and, and they want to go with a lawyer. You know, when they do an investment, we could be talking about a golden visa, well, buying a property, and they just uh, end up asking us for suggestion or recommendation or, or what that shall they do, etc. Sometimes, you know, as a golden visa, you need to have one of the other possibilities is 1 million euros invested in the stocks and shares right. in Spain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You don't need to buy a property. You could do that as well. Or you could buy two million public debt. That's the three sort of yeah. Do many scale. people do that? I don't think, not, not so no, many. No, 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 no. There is no need. There is no, no right, need, no. you know, but uh, they are the three. The most popular is the property. Yes, of course. But as I was saying, a lot of people as well, not related to Golden Visa, they're, they, were, they are interested. They have the 150,000 euros they want to invest somewhere else. And, and they ask for uh, advice and, and legal advice. And I think it's great because when you go to a lawyer, an independent lawyer, he will tell you what he thinks and he will give you the advice independently. Mm. So obviously there are many products in, in the market, but, but you should analyze with them mm. what they want and, and the options. Right. And, um, and, and I think sometimes... Mm, they don't do this exercise and I think I will recommend them to do it because you always have a second opinion on what you are mm. investing your mm. money Some in. are set up like that. I mean, we talked to uh, Christina yesterday from Black Tower and they are independent financial mm -hmm. advisors, mm -hmm. but some companies are tied in to sell just this one product. Correct, <laughs> exactly. Correct. So, Correct. you know, Correct. This, we, no. we I have had, I mean, in the last 20 years, I mean, obviously we've I've seen uh, many, many situations, but obviously when someone comes and says, I'm going to invest in two properties, I'm going to rent it out. I'm going to depend on the, on the rent and say, wait, wait, wait. 
well, let's, let's come, let's be patient. I'm usually the industry of property to get a profit is not easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right now, obviously, it's well organized with uh, platforms uh, in order to rent it up, in order to. But if you're gonna buy, obviously, you to, you need to put in hands of a, a company, a management company that it well, works well, a company that is gonna be send you in order to whatever investment you're gonna do, you're doing it properly. I mean, there's not gonna be any 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 mistake on any situation that may occur in the in the process of buying. So, because we've seen situations where someone put all the balls. All the eggs, as you say, all the eggs, all the in, eggs the same in one bag. basket. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. So that shouldn't be like that, or you need to be passionate. You need to know where you're entering. Because, mm. yeah, someone renting first time, they think, well, how, how hard can this be? I'll just get this money coming in. It's easy. Exactly. But there are a lot of things uh, come up unexpected, especially when you have problem tenants and the like. Uh, exactly. Uh, have you had any uh, more, any, any cases of Ocupas uh, where you were recently? <laughs> yeah. any, any of those come your way? Well, I mean, it's, um, the situation of Ocupas, obviously, it. it it has been a, a, lot squat, of, a lot of squatters, adverts, yeah, squats. Yeah, um, it really is, it happens when uh, properties are absolutely empty. Mm -hmm. uh, properties, it's not, it's not something that happens with a um, uh, permanent home where people uh, leave. So, or second or holiday home, it doesn't happen. That obviously, if you Google, you probably probably find some uh, some uh, news about that. But it's it's not it's not the case really. Mm -hmm. No, the case really happens when uh, coupas a uh, entering properties are, are absolutely empty, abandoned. Uh, all properties are from banks, so people just left the properties uh, uh, absolutely abandoned. So those properties uh, appear as they are occupas, and obviously it's a problem you know, to, put, to put them out. It takes time, it takes time, and you need to be patient. Yeah. Mm. Is there anything changing on in the law as far as evicting them goes? Is, do they work changing anything as far as the legal side goes? Well, from the legal side, I mean, there is an express situation in order to put uh, coupas out um, on civil case. Obviously, in a criminal case, it's like someone occupying your property, which is a criminal uh, um, uh, offence. And, well, some situations happen, for example, on the occupas, when somebody occupies when it has, like, children, for example. That's, yeah. that's one of the issues really that happens. Or when they show up uh, that, um, oh, I have a contract with, uh, with the owner, and they show a contract, which is a uh, fake, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and then the policeman knows, it, a policeman just doubts about that, so they cannot put them out. You need to go to the court. The court says there's a contract. We need to verify which is the signature. I mean, it takes. Sometimes it's because the Koopa, sometimes they, they lie. They lie. Mm -hmm. um, and by the, for example, the situation about children, it's um, a little bit more, <clears throat> I would say, delay, because obviously... The support of uh, social services in order to check the situation about um, the children. They are they need to have a place to live, obviously, and they they're going to protect the children to live. And um, while the situation is is verified, obviously they need to find the social services, the public system. They find another property to put this family in a different place in order to live. So it takes more time. Sure, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and we pos couldn't possibly recommend it or condone it, but so I do hear that there are certain companies you could uh, mm -hmm. yeah. call and they will go and get them out for yeah. you. <laughs> and actually, yeah, this is one option. And the legal, the legal option, uh, some people even negotiate with them. But yeah. what I recommend to, to the audience that they have properties, um, they, I mean, you don't need to have a, a specific alarm but I think it's very, very good okay. for them yeah. uh, if it's connected to their mobile, etc. because if they're traveling and things, if they are in fear that this could happen uh, in 72 hours, the police could, has, has a, a time to take them out. But after that time, you are a culpa. So mm. if you've been more, and, and, and here you could play with the evidence uh, of everything. But they will say they've been here for long enough. You will say no. But if, they, if the um, alarm... It goes on, and then you send the police there. The police will take them out because that's that's really it's a theft, you know. It's yeah, a theft. yeah, sure. Otherwise, if they stay more than seventy-two hours, they are occupas, yeah. and then the alarm doesn't really, uh, you know, the, the 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 really point of the alarm is to to contact the police straight away. So it's like somebody is breaking into my property uh, and breaking in. Mm. Uh, you could use any alarm or even you could buy through Amazon and, and connect it to your mobile. But I think that's good advice. It saves you stress, money and uh, Yeah, there's plenty issues. of ways of doing it these days, isn't it, with the, the, the doorbell cameras and all that sort correct, of thing. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but yes, um, so that's... that's and. Um, I think is is pretty much control. Yeah. It depends on the workload in the courts. Yeah. yeah. 
once he, someone has a property and, and is informed by the neighbors or by anyone that someone is occupying, you need to act rapidly. Yes, rapidly. That yeah. little window of opportunity through, through yeah. the courts, through the police. I mean, you need to act rapidly. I mean, yeah. as soon as you do it, better. Yeah, mm. that's right. I just asked you about the Nomad visa. <laughs> it sounds like it's uh, you know, a bit complicated because um, it was the thing people were looking forward to coming in, i.e. you can come and work in Spain mm-hmm. remotely mm-hmm. and it made things easier for you. What's the hiccup? What's the holdup? Uh, yeah. What's been the issue? Well, the, the, the main problem I find with the Nomad visa is to get the, the, the documents from Social Security in your home country and legalize them here in Spain. Because, you know, when they come with big companies, big companies will not get you these documents or, you know, it's, it's not easy to, to, to for them to provide it. And uh, this is where we get stuck with... Uh, uh, yeah, in some ways, I mean, obviously, we need to send the application forms. They need to sign them. This is in Spanish. You know, so they are not yeah. confident with this. So yeah. We need to have some appointments with them. So it's like... St- I mean, it reduce much. obviously the the process. It could be more like more rapid. In, in so this would be someone that's working for a company outside yeah. of Spain rather than being self employed and freelance, whatever. It, yeah, it, at the it, end, it, normal, well, it could be it could be self employment. I mean, normal visa at the end focused to someone who will be able to work remotely. Yeah, from sure. In Spain, and from uh, clients or, or employer, employer, obviously outside Spain, or clients which at least eighty percent of them are outside of Spain. And well, the normal visa has uh, obviously this. Uh, I think in the following months or following time, in, in the future, will be will be reduced this bureaucracy that is happening and is everything. Everyone is struggling on that step. And but obviously, the good thing is that normal visa is attracting a lot of a lot of uh, people to come to Spain, and the tax opportunities for them yeah. are absolutely good. We we that's, always talk yeah. about that. that. That's a good thing of because we are mixing normal visa with the with the special tax, tax regime. regime. Uh, I mean, actually, when you're an employee. yes, and and actually, for people, and this is important. People don't know. We always talk about normal visa, and then trying to use the tax regime. But sometimes you are an expat, or you are uh, an Spaniard who's been more than five years away, mm-hmm. and then you don't need to go in the golden um, the normal visa because you already have your ID cards. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't need one. Pedro wouldn't. Uh, we've been out of the country for, for more than five years, and then we come, want to come back. We've been non-resident in Spain, and now we want to be resident in Spain. That's a specific, so it's, it's ley de emprendedores, yeah. mm-hmm. right? And that goes tied in with the, with the normal visa, which is the immigration, mm-hmm. but you could apply for the reduction on the tax, which is what Pedro says yeah. is the most attractive thing of the Noma visa. Yes. The people applying for Noma visa will apply as well for the special tax regime of 24% flat fee up to 600,000 euros. So if your invoices, invoicing your company, big amounts, you want exactly. to go that, for that. Exactly. And, and, and in most of cases, when you have a big income, obviously 24% is lower than the rate that you are paying, average rate that you're paying yeah, in your country, yeah. let's say 30, 35, 40%. But not just that, because it's tax in Spain just the salary. Just the salary. If mm-hmm. you get any investment, any any interest, any dividend, any capital gain, anything outside of Spain, it doesn't tax in Spain. No. It's not tax. No. So it's really good if you just pay tax 24% fluffy, that's all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's been attracted to people. So you have been taking applications for this. Yes. Uh, not just yourselves. It's a little bit coming in all over the place, but uh, not quite out stuck. there and free. Yeah, it's, it's a bit stuck now yeah. because uh, requesting more paperwork, as yeah. Pedro said. And how do you explain uh, a big enterprise, you know, a big company, um, that you need yeah. all this paperwork. I know it's difficult to explain because obviously we sometimes we say, well, this is I, I cannot I cannot even I don't have arguments because it takes time. It's taking time. Is it stopped there and then is for some reason is re- rejected and then we need to apply again. But obviously the, the documents needs to be updated. Mm. Mm. So I need some more and, and it's the fraud and the frustration about um, the client about this situation. But obviously, we are there to help. But sometimes, obviously, that does not depend obviously in, in us. No. Self-employed, self-employed is easier. easier yeah. But the problem is, doesn't fit into the categories of the twenty-four yeah, percent uh, right. tax regime. So, is it less attractive from a tax point of view? Well, they will pay the same that you may exactly. Oh, it that's right. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. If, if yeah, you, yeah. Because you need to be in a category, and it's more difficult as self-employed fit into that category of like a consultant, you see. Mm. Um, that's, that's the only thing that... So 
it's got all these issues. So that's why the NUMA visa mm -hmm. needs to be very specific. It's very, very picky. And you need a specialist for sure. I mean, mm. I, I don't think anybody. And, will, I will dare. And as it happened with the with the uh, golden visa you know, for an investment or for projects or, or a, uh, a high professionals. I mean, in this one, no matter just started, so it's going to be in the following uh, months and years. It's going to be some changes in order to adapt to the to the needs of the, of the pe people to facilitate their attractions into Spain. So I guess the issue is if they're working for a big company, this company is saying, well, we've got better things to do than sort out your paperwork just so you can go off to Spain and work. <laughs> uh, it's, it's too much hassle for them. The right. Well, well, there is a way to, to – the, there, there are always ways to go around it with, with the visas, mm. okay? But we try to fight Moody for the best, best visa for the client and best tax regime, and that's what makes it difficult. To, you know, yeah, we sure. all want – we we'll go for the moon, you know, ask right. for the moon and, and, and see what you get. So. Yeah, yeah, cool. But, but that's what we try. But they're in, it's in process and yeah. uh, it'll get ironed out. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll give you updates on, sure. on that. And uh, uh, and I think the law and the acts needs to be much more developed, uh, more m easier, less bureaucracy. And uh, I think, as Petra said, I think it's part of experience. It's the first visa that they've done this way. And once they know, is not an easy one. I mean, they might... Yes, you learn from your you mistakes. Know, and looking ahead to... It's a, the webinar it used to fall when we, we were on air, but this is next week, did you yes, say? Yes, it's, it's the first for September. We're being just uh, yeah, well, that's all right. a you bit lazy on it. You're getting into the swing of things. No, no, you've got plenty yeah. going on. Yeah. Enough on your plate. Yeah. But, um, yeah, back with the, the streaming webinars, uh, which people can get involved with. And what was the, the subject again? For the we're going to we're gonna try to give updates on the Golden Visa and buying a property in Spain. Uh-huh. But uh, if they cannot watch it, it will be recorded the, fo the following day. Exactly. It will be in our website. And uh, if that topic, they, uh, they're not interested with that one, they have plenty of of topics in the webinars uh, room in the website. Yes, some previous ones there, but also the blog, which is always recommended. Yeah. Uh, have a browser. Awesome. There should, yeah. be, should be everything you need to know. Yeah, know. well, Things actually, just get I think we have 350 or 70 uh, articles already. Really? Yeah, yeah. that's what, what the guy says. So every time we need to amend something is difficult, as you could imagine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I guess the laws get updated and uh, that sort of thing. But I have to say, you're, as far as the online presence and your webinars and you know uh, social media posts, yeah. now, you're, you're right on top of there doing a great yeah. job with those. Um, uh, I think, I the think team there. We, we, we try to do it when we set up the business little by little. You know, it was difficult to set up a, a website. Uh, Pedro had the idea we had to have a website. Uh, and that was 12, 2010, probably. Yeah. And uh, and then from there we've been pushing to 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 reach more people. Yeah, at the end, yeah. at the end we understand. That. I mean, uh, people, clients. We are also clients from the different companies. I mean, at the end we need information. We need information. We need to be informed as much as possible. At the end. Mm -hmm. So and, uh, this is what we do. I mean, with the webinars, with seminars, with uh, articles, with uh, videos, as much to inform as much as possible uh, uh, to clients. And um, this is our main point, really, mm. in order to, mm. to help them. Obviously, at the end, it's a, it's a business that we, uh, one of the big points, obviously, the service and the information that we give, the advice. Yeah, and of course, if it's online, you're reaching people in North America. Exactly. Yeah, so maybe yeah. Gonna that, that's the beauty of the yeah, online, yeah. and, and yeah. we did move for that. Of and course. Yeah, and we'll carry on doing so. so. Absolutely. Um, so alicantilawyers.es, the easiest way to uh, find yeah. your website, yeah. otherwise pay there already at dot .com. Um, so have a look at the blog, and we will hopefully catch up with you in a fortnight's time. Yeah. Thanks ever so much for your time. As I say, it's always appreciated. Paith Air and Aredia are your international lawyers based on the Costa Blanca. We've been assisting expats for over a decade with laws to protect assets and look after your loved ones, and continue to do so in post-Brexit Spain. For advice on tax, wills and inheritance, immigration or real estate, call 965-480-737.